MP Famous, you have your 20 minutes. Mr. Speaker, I won't even be that long. Mr. Speaker, earlier, I, I know I heard the word debatable, portable, potable. So I won't get into that. But I know I did hear a honorable member in this house say, and I quote, the speed of which investors get approvals. Mr. Speaker, I remember going back about 10 years ago, there were cries and I wouldn't say cries, but a, a, a concerted campaign to get us to start thinking about being like Cayman Islands. There were proposals and there were policies in place to loosen our immigration. Some worked, some didn't work. And all this was to say, we need more population. Okay, that may be true. But Mr. Speaker, every single individual, whether they be rich, poor, or whatever, needs somewhere to live. There's a thing called physics, right? You have to balance the equation. Correct? E equals AMC squared. You can't have an increase in population unless you have an increase in housing. Right now, we have very little housing in this island. Let me declare, I am, until the, until the colonel says so, I am the chair of the Bumila Housing Corporation. We have no houses. People are paying extraordinary amounts of money I should say extorted for paying rent. We have no houses in this country, or affordable housing. So the more housing that goes towards those who can afford it, there's less housing for those who cannot afford it. So when we have people saying, we need more people in the island, or some of those same people are like, no, you can't build there. No, you can't build there. But where can we build it? Yeah? In the water, in the air, where should we build? Mr. Speaker, I'm not saying that any political party has it all right, but what I'm saying is if Bermudians have to accept that we need more population, then the next segment of Bermuda has to accept we need more houses. So we need to have less and less grandstanding of persons saying no, no housing, no, no housing. Mr. Speaker, like you and others, I was raised on principles. If you support this side, you stay on that side. If you support that side, you stay on that side. You can't be wish washing. Mr. Speaker, over the next couple hours, days, 125 million pounds will be spent over in the United Kingdom, or has been spent, celebrating the coronation of the latest monarch. Now some might say, well, you know, it's tradition. Yeah, it's tradition. But guess what? The British government would spend that money in a heartbeat. Last year they spent how much until millions on a 70 year birthday or whatever they call that for somebody sitting, Jubilee. And they have spent more money on, on a funeral, right? All for one family. But not one dime is going to the people that's been enslaved. Not one dime is going to the people whose land has been taken from. Mr. Speaker, this thing called anecdotal, anecdotal evidence and things called real evidence. There's this newspaper of note from Manchester called The Guardian. They have a habit of doing series, fact-finding. And on April the 6th, they, they published this. 12 British monarchs have sponsored, supported, and profited from Britain's involvement in slavery. Inclusive of Charles II, the guy who's going in church tomorrow is Charles III, and Elizabeth I. So I say that, Mr. Speaker, that when you have a monarch that gives a ship to a pirate called John Hawkins in exchange for profits from slavery, 
How do you respect that institution, Mr. Speaker? Slavery that killed black people, slavery that committed genocide around the world. How do you respect that institution, Mr. Speaker? Are we suffering from Stockholm syndrome? Where we're, where we're sympathizing with our capitals? Mr. Speaker, as people who have been colonized, we have been conditioned to revert this that have did the worst to us. Recently, the Church of England has admitted that they have made $10 billion off of slavery. $10 billion. And guess what, Mr. Speaker? They said over the next 10 years, they will give $100 million to make people aware of what slavery did. So some people would say, oh, that's $100 million. That's a lot of money. But I went to Barclay, right? Or as the colonel would say, Barclay. And my math says $100 million is only 1% of $10 billion. So we have the Church of England made $10 billion off of slavery and is willing to give up 1%. Not even 10% like the tithes, right? 1% over the course of 10 years. So that's any of the interest. So I say, Mr. Speaker, in closing, I was brought up on principles. There is no way I am going to stand here in this house and say congratulations to anybody who's product of enslaving millions of people. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.